Hey guys and gals, today I'm going to be flying from Davenport back here at the house. I need to do a little ceramic coating and some more cleaning on the airplane. I got the belly and all done. And uh, some people were asking me about my JPI 900 engine monitor. And so I'm going to go through, they specifically want to know about what Savvy Aviation does, because I keep talking about them. Uh, with far as analyzation of the data and how hard is it to dump it and look at it and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go through all that, show you uh, how I do it with a thumb drive. It's real simple, it's real quick. Doesn't take a long time at all. Uh, so uh, be t stay tuned after that because I'm gonna include both flights, the flight here. And then after I get all that done and clean up a little bit, I'm gonna try to beat the weather. We got some bad weather coming here. So I'm gonna shoot back over to Davenport and uh, come along with me. Stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. Welcome aboard. I'm gonna fly to the house this morning and do a little bit more cleaning on the airplane. I'm gonna clean uh, the wings and put a little wax on it, get some bugs off, clean the windows, stuff like that. Thought y'all, uh, I would bring y'all along with me. Supposed to be getting some weather in here shortly, so I don't know how long I'll be able to stay at the house. Maybe a couple hours, I think. Yeah, we've got some weather over around the morning. Skyhawk 737 Golf Sulu is seven miles to the northwest, inbound for landing 15 uh, Davenport. It'll be a while before it gets here. I can go mess around on the plane, though. It'll be all right. All right, everything looks good. I'm waiting for the temp to come up, the oil temp. It'll be good, uh, good to go by the time we get to the runway. Well, he's that way. All right, we'll do a brake check. There's both brakes. Left brake. Right brake. Davenport traffic, Dakota 1 out of Mike, taxi from the T's to runaway 15 Davenport. It's going to be a hot one today. 85 degrees. I got a lot of Yankees complaining about it going to be hot today, but you ain't never going to hear old Chad complain about that because I save all my complaining for the cold. I don't tell everybody that around here about y'all don't have no heat here in Iowa because y'all do. Y'all have heat in Iowa. There ain't no doubt about it. But I don't never admit that. That way, I can complain more when it gets cold, because old Chad can't hang when it's cold. Woo! Ooh. It ain't no wonder you Yankees won the war, as tough as y'all are, man. Woo! Ain't no doubt about it. Oh, that's a lot better. Davenport, Travis Dakota, one nine of Mike, crossing runway zero three two one, taxi one five, Davenport. Zero 
Runway zero three two one. All right, runway's clear. Air's clear. And we got a guy shooting an approach on one five. He's a few miles out. We'll start the checklist. Instruments green. Autopilot configured. Fuel selector fullest tank. Fuel pump on. Carburetor heat cold. Blocked. Mixture set. Propeller full forward. Seat belts fastened. Flaps two set. Trim tabs, set neutral. Controls, free and correct. Door, closed and latched. Cockpit fan, off. Brakes, released. Hug, set. Altimeter, set. Put the spurs to this mule. Checklist complete. Skyhawk 737 gone through the short final, 1-5 full stop. Put the spurs to this mule, I like that business. That's a nice looking Dakota. Well now, I was just fixing to comment on your airplane. Papa told me great things about that plane. Well, I appreciate it, I sure am proud of the stream catcher, no doubt. I like that one. Aviators talk good about each other. You need to stop in over at the house sometime, buzz in there and land, I'll get you something to drink. Where's that? Are you in Gentile? No, I'm in Bluegrass. Ah, we may do that. Yeah, I got it on the charts. Now, 6-0 India Alpha, when you land going to the uh, west, I'm the last house on the right with the hangar. Just pull up in there anytime you want. I appreciate that. You bet. Temple traffic, Skyhawk 737 Golf Sulu, back taxi, 2-1 Alpha, Bravo, for the T's. Deport. Davenport traffic, Dakota 19 Mike, taking runway 15, departure to the southwest Davenport. All right, landing lights coming on. Runway 15, 5,400 feet remaining. And again, air is clear, runway is clear. All right, we got it going on our way. Give it a little bit of power. Put the fuel mixture all the way up. Here we go. T's and P's are in the green. Airspeed indicator's coming alive. Get out of the way, bird. Clean her up. Slip on over to the Quad Cities.
Watch that it's approached Dakota 6-9 or 1-9 a mic. Six nine or one nine or Mike Watts at your approach. Squawk four five four five. South altitude in request. Four five four five. Level two thousand just off of Davenport going to bluegrass. Full stop. Dakota one nine or Mike. Radar contact one mile east of Davenport Airport. Watts at altimeter two nine or eight eight. And you, did you say your destination was bluegrass? Yes, sir. Six zero India Alpha. And I'll be stopping there. Dakota one nine or Mike Roger. Bumpy on the ground, but it's a little bumpy up here. Not too bad, though. Fuel pump's coming on. Fuel stabilization verified. Boy, it's a doggone hazy. I can usually see the airport. I mean, you know, the runways over Quad Cities from right here. Like it ain't nothing. I can't even see a quarter mile on the other side of that river. It's hazy today. Got some storms coming in. Don't know if we'll get them, but it, it, it's a chance. Get pretty close. They're around uh, just a bit uh, east of uh, Des Moines right now, kind of headed to the northeast. Michelle went off buying some flowers. She's always doing something in that yard, I tell you. I can't keep up with her. Field inside for one on a mic. Dakota one on a mic, radar for terminated, swap the far for change proof. One on a mic, see ya.
right, we're almost there. Pull back to about 18 inches. Get her slowed down a little bit. Oh, it is hazy. Gas is on the proper tank. Moody 2, Tangle Fox, drive contact. Fuel pump is coming on. Landing lights coming on. Undercarriage is down and bolted. Thank you, you set. Prop will get hammered. Seat belts buckled. Moody 2, Tangle Fox, drive contact. St. Louis approach. 125.8, 258. Autopilot disengaged. 258, thank you. 2, Tangle Fox, drive. Winds are pretty much well calm over Davenport. Get out of the way, Eagle. I'll check the windsock here, though. Might be a little different. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty much hanging down. So we'll just do a one, uh, land to the uh, east here. All right, prop's going to go in full. Already flap speed, flaps one. Any knots. Gas is on the proper tank, fuel pump is on, undercarriage is down and bolted, mixture is set, prop is full, seat belts buckled. Kind of overshot a little bit. 500. Flaps two. All right, I got her made. We'll go full flaps. Quad City's approach, exec jet. 397-165, descending to 11,000 with Bravo. 70 knots. Exact jet 397, quad city approach. Expect vectors for visual approach runway niner. We'll expect that, exact jet 397. <laughs> I hate that dog on ESP when it does that to me. Didn't turn it off that time. I got to get another G5 put in here. This one does some things sometimes and sometimes it don't. Nothing dangerous, but my air speed's off a little bit. Not bad. You know, and that's expected. All right, landing lights off, fuel pumps off. But what it does is sometimes it don't... Uh, ESP is... Electronic stability protection, 
you know, it's supposed to nudge you when you start to doing something against parameters. And it's supposed to, by default, automatically come on every single time when you crank up. And so when you, it stays on unless you turn it off right up there. And once you get below, I think it's two or 300 feet AGL, it kicks off automatic. But that's not, that's a little bit too low for me. I like to kick it off myself because I have to trim this Dakota pretty uh, nose up because it's so nose heavy and it helps me in the flare. And sometimes I go to kick it off, it's, it's off. It doesn't automatically come on. Sometimes I've seen it automatically kick off at 300 feet, sometimes at 200 feet. So they got me a nudge coming. They're going to mail it to me where I can just pull this one out, put a new one in because it's still under warranty. Ooh, that's better. Get some airflow. Kind of turn around when I can get a little. Ten degrees right, pilot's discretion down to five thousand. So I could kind of wipe on it a little bit. Get it in the shade a little bit after a little while, maybe not though. All right, guys, thanks for coming along with me. I'll catch you on another flight. See ya. All right, guys and gals. Some people were asking me, a couple of guys were asking me about my monitor, my engine monitor. So here's a, a thumb drive that I use. So just get you any thumb drive per the directions on the, uh, the JPI. Mine's a 900. Some guys, are, uh, they're getting those 930s and all. They're all good units. So this is the adapter that goes on to the thumb drive right there. I don't know if you can see it real good. And so I'm going to go turn the airplane, the, uh, the master on. I'm going to plug it in and walk you through exactly what it does. just takes a few split seconds. Then we'll go down in the, uh, on the computer and I'll show you how I send it to uh, Savvy Aviation. All right, so I got back in the airplane here. Let me move these headsets. So what I do is I just turn the battery master on. JPI is booting up. It's going to go through a few checks. It's going to ask me if I want to refuel. So I hit no. And now it's ready to run. You know, you can crank up. Parameters are all ready to rock. So while it's in this mode, before you crank the engine or anything, you take this and stick it right inside there and just wait. It said download new, so I'm going to hit yes, and there it goes. It just downloaded the flight from Davenport to right here at my house, and it's done now. And it says in there to wait about 10 seconds, 
before you pull it out because all you have to do is pull it out and you're done. So there it comes out. Then I reach over there, turn my battery master back off. And then I take this part, it comes back off the adapter for the, uh, for the 900, for the monitor there. And then I just go inside, plug this thumb drive in, and we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, we're in here by the computer, so I'm just gonna take this thumb drive. I'm gonna plug it into the computer. All right, so there that go, comes right there. So right here, where I'm highlighting, this is the information that it jumped from the uh, monitor to the thumb drive. You don't need to do anything with this right now. You're just making sure it's there. Don't, you don't need to click on it, none of that stuff. So when you're a member of Savvy Aviation and all kinds of benefits by being you know, a member of those guys. I'll, I'll go into that later. You get all kinds of perks that you just wouldn't believe. You need to look into it. If you, you don't have uh, any information on Savvy Aviation, you need to look them up. Uh, Mike Bush is the guy's name, and they analyze this engine data. Like when I send it today, as soon as I push it, you're going to be able to look at it with me. And I'll show you, I've learned how to pretty much analyze it all myself, but I send it to Savvy Aviation the very next day because it's a Sunday, today's Sunday. So if it's not a Saturday or a Sunday, the very same day, a mechanic looks at it and he analyzes the last 10 flights of my plane in their database. They let me know if anything's changing, anything's getting uh, weird, abnormal, whatever. And after every 10 flights, if nothing goes, if nothing's wrong, every time they reach 10 flights, they send me a report on how my engine's doing based on all of my flights. If everything's staying the same, is the cylinder losing, uh, some of it's, you know, gump, if it's getting a little bit of more heat to it or EGTs and all that stuff, they keep up with that and they send me a report. Not only do they do that, in the report they send you, they are comparing my Dakota to, I mean, over a thousand, I think, Dakotas that they're already managing. So you get to see your average temps and pressures and everything on your Dakota, and they compare it to all, they call it a cohort, so they compare it to everybody else's to let you know how your engine's doing and how your engine's doing compared to all of the other Dakotas that they're they're managing you know on their website so they just keep up with it all the time it's the best thing since sliced bread it's like having an onboard navigator having that jpi engine monitor in the first place but when somebody can absolutely uh analyze this for you and send it back so quick and you can call them anytime you can request that they do a uh, a check on uh, your information and if you're concerned with anything like that it just it's great so anyway here we go so I see that this is up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize it. I'm gonna go over here to the internet. I'm gonna to go to Savvy Aviation. I'm gonna click on that. And there's the button I'm gonna sign in. And here's all my stuff. This is all my flights. They're everywhere, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to minimize that down a little bit. And I'm going to come over here to this button that says Upload Flight. So all you got to do is click that. And now I'm going to go back down to the engine monitor data, which is right here. Okay, that's what we started with. And you see right here, you just it says just drag and drop the files. So go over here to the files that you just got off the, uh, that's on the thumb drive. Click and hold, drag it right here, and just drop it. Done. There's the flight. That is the flight. I'm checking the date. Tells me how long I flew. 27 minutes and 52 seconds was actually from startup. 
So it only took me about eight minutes or so to get here. Tells you right there it was successful. It's checked, so I'm going to save that flight. All right. And it put it in here with all my other flights. Now here it is right here. What I do is I go there, and here's all my data. I'm going to blow this up for you. Now you can change whatever this thing, all these lines, you can change all kinds of stuff to see what you, you want to actually see. So if you see up here, it's color coded and every line that tells you what it is, there's the blue line, the light blue. The light blue is my oil temp and you just move it along and it tells you the whole flight what it was. All these other ones are EGTs. Now down here at the bottom, I have my, all my CHTs and my RPM is the light blue, or I'm sorry, the, the green is my RPM. So I move this over to where I'm taking off. There's my takeoff right there. So there's my RPMs up to 2361, 2367. And there's all of my CHTs and their numbers and it, and it gives it. There's a red line of 400 degrees. You can go over that just a little bit on takeoff. You know, so if you're a little over 400, that's okay. And then here's the whole flight. You could just go through and it checks when you move it. It checks your CHTs and your EGTs, the oil and the RPM all at once. And you can change these right here. See that? You just click that and you can tell whatever you want all that stuff to be. It's just where I got it set. And then uh, I come here to departure. I always like to put, you know, where I went. So I started at Davenport. I save it. My destination was 60 India Alpha. I save it. Now I'm done. They've already got it. I don't have to do anything. They have this information. I just go right here and click it. I'm done. Now what I do that I know that it's sent is I come back to the thumb drive, I right click, and I delete that information because I don't want it on there anymore. So it's gone. X out of that, pull your thumb drive out when you eject it. Come on. There we go. And that's it. Pull it out and you're done. You're ready for the next flight. It's just that easy. So that's how you do that, guys. It's just that easy. Put my thumb drive and the adapter back in my flight bag. And if you look around and, and start researching on Savvy Aviation, uh, you wouldn't believe the benefits that they do. One time I came out of Texas, or I'm sorry, out of Colorado, and I was in my Archer 3. I was living in Colorado. So I took off out of Colorado and was going over to uh, southwest Texas around Del Rio to a hunting ranch that me and my cousins have leased for almost 20 years to go do a, uh, some turkey hunting. I'd had this archer about, oh, three months. It was a 1999 model, and uh, my fuel stop was somewhere in north Texas almost on the Oklahoma line or New Mexico line or something like that. I don't remember. But anyway, I landed, got fuel, and I still had about uh, uh, maybe a two-hour flight left, two and a half, something like that. I don't remember. But when I got fuel, I climbed back in the plane, and this, this airport was in the middle of nowhere. It was a crop dusting, uh, commercial crop dusting going on on this field. But... It was a Sunday, nobody was there. I got fuel, climbed back in the airplane, I hit the starter button, nothing. The Bendix was just rolling, it wasn't hitting the starter, the flywheel. Man, I didn't know what to do. So, I'm in the middle of nowhere, there was no town nearby, it was just out in the middle of nowhere, and here I am, stranded. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I, I looked at it, I saw what was happening, I tapped on the Bendix, it didn't work, so. And then, oh, lo and behold, a, a guy doing some flight instruction, an old man, had to walk with a cane. He was in a Cherokee 180 with a student on a Sunday. And he was stationed there, and he landed. Just happened to so that he was the mechanic for that field. 
that man was nice enough. I told him what problem I was having. He looked at it a few minutes. He says, yep, you gotta, you gotta change the, the Bendix gear. It's gotta be changed, it's just bad. There I am in the middle of nowhere. There's no motels, nothing around there. That man was nice enough. He said, hey, there's a 60 something model 172 of mine. Just take it and go. I'll fix your plane. I'll have it done in about two or three days. Unbelievable. I loaded all my stuff in that plane, took off, finished my hunt, came back, paid the man about 800 bucks, worth every penny, climbed back my Archer 3, went back home to Colorado. I got lucky. But my point is, if that would have happened and that guy wouldn't have been there, I don't know what I'd have done. So, when you're a member of Savvy Aviation, and I think I pay about $300 a year for their services, let's say that I'd have done that and landed and, and something went wrong, they got a phone number you can call. You call it, give me your end number and your name and the problem you're having. Don't matter when it is, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, within 15 minutes, a mechanic from that area will call you and he will come there, help you, whatever. He'll walk you through it if it's something that if you're mechanically inclined, he can tell you what to do. And he pulls up all of your data on your plane while he's sitting there telling you all this stuff. It's unbelievable. Worth every penny. And all the other analyzations they do, uh, they give you a percentage of your exhaust valves, all that stuff. Check it out at Savvy Aviation, old Mike Bush. He's the reason why I fly the way I do, along with uh, George Brawley, who has the most advanced test sale for piston aircraft in the world, right there in Ada, Oklahoma. I've talked to both of them, and I don't like getting into debates about flying. I'm not an instructor, I'm not a mechanic, and I explain to people, I answer the question, why I fly the way I do. I don't tell people how to fly. Some guys are commenting, telling me, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. I, I don't want to get into debate. My channel is all about having fun and flying. I don't debate on my channel, I don't do politics, and I will talk about religion though, because I do believe in the good Lord Jesus Christ, that's a fact. I'll say that in front of anybody, if you don't like it, don't watch. But if you check those guys out, I learned a lot from them too, probably two of the smartest individuals about piston aircraft engines in the United States, if not the world. But give them a call, uh, I don't get paid to do this, they don't know I'm saying this, I'm just telling you people are asking me why I fly the way I fly, check them out. You'll, you'll understand their scientific analysis on aircraft engines for today, not off of POHs that were written back in the 50s by lawyers. And so the technology today is a lot different than it was in the 50s and 60s. So is the way we operate our engines. We take care of the engines and they take care of us. But check those guys out, it's worth it to me. If uh, that sounds interesting to you, uh, just let me know in the comments that you checked them out and you like it. It gives you peace of mind. I like it. So I'm going to start on this thing. I've run my mouth enough. I'm going to start uh, wiping down on it a little bit. I cleaned the windows earlier and uh, got the belly. Get a few bugs off of it. Put a little ceramic coating on it. Hopefully before that weather comes in. And I'll uh, catch the film on the way back. I'll film it. 